Guys, welcome to ASFN once again. It's 2020. There's been a lot of reggies around here on the, our Zululand coastline. Summer is here. Um, just want to show you how to do a circle hook raggy trace, um, long distance casting once again with a bite back in, involved in it. Okay, what we need for it 12 0 mustard circle hook, very important. Um, some kingfisher nylon. For our stopper knots, some beads obviously for the stopper knot itself, 200 pound nylon coated wire, that's our Fishmate brand, a dangle, something that floats, very very nice, NT swivels, very important for this trace, it stops the wire from looking like a pig's tail when you actually catch a couple of them, uh, sinker clips very important we will adapt one or two of them just for casting purposes 10 um, power swivels or number one it's up to you <clears throat> some heat shrink 2.4 mil heat shrink one mil kingfisher nylon that's basically for your sinker trace uh, fishing for raggies a lot of times they will bite your nylon off and then obviously you get slack line and the raggy can't catch up to your actual bait um, solid rings, very important. This one here is a size 5, uh, you can use a size 6, it's up to you. Circle hooks. I see so many guys using circle hooks and they're using stiff, stiff wire. What stiff wire does is actually kick it out of the fish's mouth. So if you're using 200 pound nylon coated wire, that hook gets kicked out of the fish's mouth, the reggie's mouth, a lot of times. Try and find soft, supple wire somewhere. Um, this is something that we get from overseas, um, it's not available in the country as yet. Uh, 214 pounds, uh, but it's soft, it's absolutely flexible, malleable, excellent for circle hooks. And I'll show you as I go along, I'll do one trace or one hook with a hard wire and one with soft wire, you'll see the difference. Okay, okay first of all, we're going to use the hook snoot part, 1.2 meters in length. So I'm just going to cut a piece of that, 1.2 meters. One point two. All right. One point two. Side cutters, and that's done with that soft wire. One point two. One point six meters of nylon coated fish mate and that is 200 pounds so I'm going to do the 1.6 just so I get an exact one I'm just going to use my, my ruler 1.6 perfect okay mustard 13.0 tuna circle look Okay guys, what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, soft wire and we're going to snell it. Very simply, we go in from the bottom of the eye of the hook, turn it around, and we're going to wrap it around six times. One, two, three, four, five, six times, and we're going to come in through the top of the eye, work our way down. So you can see it there, okay. Just again, just grab a lighter. It's the easiest way of doing it. And you just lightly melt the actual coating, plastic coating. There we go, very quick, very easy. Just cut off the tag end of the wire there. Okay, so you can see how soft and supple this wire actually is. And the whole idea is that fish nails it and obviously it turns around, the wire turns around. It's a very easy concept. With a heavy duty wire, for instance this here, you can see it basically popping out the whole time. It's popping out the whole time because it's stiff, okay, it's stiff, compared to 
the soft wire that I'm using. You get a better hook set with softer wire. That's why that 7x7 American fishing wire is so good. Okay, just useless information. Doesn't work as well as soft wire. Okay, we're now going to tie what they call a stopper knot. And to do that, we just take a bit of nylon. Figure of eight around it. So we're going to go figure of eight. One, two, three times around and out. There's your figure of eight. Very easy, guys. You can always go back on our YouTube channels and see how to tie knots. We basically take it, pull it reasonably tight, and then just measure off 500. There we go. It's a little bit too long there. Bring it down a bit. There we go. Okay. Pull the knot tight. Have a pair of scissors. Cut off the tag end. Very simple. There we go. We repeat that again. We're going to tie two. So one, two, three times around. I just went four for fun. Open it up. There it is, forming a figure of eight. A little bit of lubrication. Like that. And pull tight. So there is your double figure of eight. Very simple, if you want to and you're still worried that you haven't pulled it tight enough, you can take some heat shrink and uh, drop some, not heat shrink, sorry, some glue, super glue. You can just put a drop of super glue on it, but we generally just use heat shrink. Very quick, very easy to use. So basically take uh, your 2.4 mil um, heat shrink cut about that much off and just give you an exact measurement there roughly 2.5 centimeters we then go from the top down onto it and over our figure of eight sliding it down like that we then take our lighter and we lightly heat it up. You can see it's starting to already form shrink in size. Just take your wet finger, just to make life quicker and faster for us to cool it down. So there we go. So you can see the two figure of eights there with the heat shrink, which is lovely. We then take two beads. One, two. I should have actually taken clear beads, but we'll try it with this and see if it works. And no, it doesn't. Okay. I'm going to get two clear beads quickly. So basically, we're just going to take two beads quickly. Let's put the one here so it doesn't roll away. Um, you can use orange, green. Like I said, you can use orange or green. I like clear, since we're making a clear trace, a clean water trace. Uh, NT swivel. Here we go. Grab the NT swivel quickly. And it's the number three NT swivel that I'm using. Um, it's one of the bigger ones. Uh, and again, it's flanged on each side. Basically, that flange prevents the wire from forming its pig's tail as it's running along it, as you can see. Basically stops any of that pig tailing that happens when you have something that's got a flat surface compared to something that's got a round surface. So you can see that that's basically what it does. That's why they're so important that you use these things. They are flipping phenomenal. Uh, second bead. Here's the second bead. Okay, now what we're gonna do is, halfway between the first stopper knot and the second stopper knot, 
and that is about 30 centimeters away. I'm going to tie another figure of eight. Let's grab a piece of nylon. One, two, three, four, five, it's basically just a limited slide that I'm making here. So it goes as far as that and that's it. Okay, let's cut that off. Cut that off. A little bit of heat shrink again. Doesn't have to be a big piece. This one I'm making on the measurement thing here, less than two centimeters. Slide it back down onto the, the knot there, like that. And again, just with the lighter, we're just going to lightly melt the nylon coated wire. And again, like I said, it's clear water fishing that we're doing here. So, try as, our best to keep it as natural as possible. Okay, so there it is there. We're then going to take another piece, about two and a half centimeters in length, of heat shrink, like that, and we slip it on and down. We get a solid ring, and again, this is a number five solid ring. You can use a number six if you want. It's up to you. Okay, here's our solid ring, and we do our figure of eight. And being a soft, supple wire like this, it's easy to work with. It's like working with nylon. Go back through. Pull my figure of eight. Pull it tight with a pair of pliers. Here's our figure of eight. Okay. We're then going to take our 200 pound nylon coated uh, wire and we're going to tie a figure of eight. On that side, the opposite side, two. So there's our figure of eight. And it's a hard wire, so remember to put your fingers into the actual loop around there so you don't kink the wire. There's your figure of eight. Pull as tight as you can. Now, what you're going to do is slide it down. And you can see over here the difference between the two a soft wire and a hard wire. I'm just going to stick it to onto that and then I'm going to pull it as hard as I can. Okay. The hard wire seems to kink a lot easier than the soft wire does. So we just move everything to where we want it to be. Cut off the tag ends. Tag end. Like that. Just make sure everything lines up nicely. Take the first heat shrink that we cut, slide it over where the knot is. And of course, with a lighter, we're just going to lightly melt it. fingers again. What's nice about that heat shrink is it actually stiffens this wire up a bit. Take another piece about two and a half centimeters in length, slip that off and we slide it down from the top. Okay. We then slide it on and over where the knot is. Oh gosh, I'm already hooked. There we go, I've got that side by you. Okay, lighter once again. Okay, so basically that's what's happened. 
We've got our solid ring, and that, just to give you an idea, that solid ring is rated at 227 kilos. This little ring here. And I've got 200 pound wire, so it's more than strong enough to hold the actual uh, strength of what we're fishing for. <coughs> the end part of it. <coughs> Again, we're just going to take about three centimeters of heat shrink and slide it on. We're then going to take our 1-0 um, power swivel over there. And we're tying a figure of eight. Very easy once again. So to do that, we're just going to go around once, twice back through the back there and open it up. There's your figure of eight formed. There's your figure of eight pulled tight. And then we just slide it down nicely. I'm now gonna go to the back quickly and just pull my knots tight. Okay. So basically what I've done is pull that knot tight. I've pulled the whole thing, I've gone to my my, my garage there and just stuck it on the wall and pulled as hard as I could. Cut off the tag end. Just make sure that little piece sits next to it. Like that. I'm going to slide my heat shrink up it. Like so. Just like that. Take my lighter. And the air conditioners are blowing my, my flame out here. Okay. Just get it to sit nicely. Okay, so there we go. There's the wire with the heat shrink on it, all sorted. I'm now going to convert a sinker clip to a holding clip. So I'm just going to grab that quickly if I can find my sinker clips. Here's my sinker clips. I'm going to take two out. So there's two clips out. Convert the one. All we do, why well, waste a good swivel? Bend it backwards, take the swivel off. We just open this up a bit. Oh, shit. Take our side cutters. Okay, so that's basically all that we've done. We just created another clip. We then take that, open that little loop up a little bit more. Like that. Take that. Take our pliers, all we're going to do is just push it back again. And very important is to bend the eye back so you get a little bit of a kick back there on it. So now what it does is it actually sits right next to your heat shrink. See that? And that's why we make that heat shrink so long, is so that it actually gives this a little bit more support. Okay, now attach our one mil nylon to our NT swivel. One mil nylon. And the reason we use one mil nylon is because the raggies tend to bite our sinkers off when they're biting and feeding. You can use 9 0, 8 0 if you want. 
But you then start losing a 20 rand sinker every time, which becomes a bit expensive at the end of the day after you've lost six traces or six sinkers. Simple figure of eight, we're just going to measure how long we want it to be. There we go. Attach our sinker clip to it. There's our sinker clip. Cut our tag ends off nice and neatly. Grab your cone sinker, grapnel, or whatever you want to use. Stick on. Okay, now. These are basically our dangles. Got a lot of flotation on it. They work extremely well. Let's take one of them out. Obviously, the one that's got the heat shrink on is where your R of your where the point of the hook is going to go through the eye of the dangle and we just push it through like that when making the bait for it make it the opposite way around where the head actually forms forward okay for long distance casting but i'll show you on our next episode how we actually bait these traces up i like to take my sinker clips and actually just open them up a bit more there's nothing worse than actually fishing and after half an hour wind it back and your whole bait still attached it so that will go on there like that and i'm just going to step back so you guys can actually see how this whole trace system works okay the clip now goes on here, like that. You can, if you want, just move this down a bit, it's up to you. Never makes a, a difference. And there's basically the whole trace that you throw. So that's pretty much 1.2 meters. So when you flick it back to throw, you're not hitting the water behind you. Generally, you're wading. Um, if you're not, good and well, but it's only 1.2 meters in total length. When it actually hits the water, the sinker, that's how, well, let's do this properly. That's how much wire you've actually got out there. So it's 2.8 meters of wire that prevents that raggy from biting back on you. And how a limited slide works is that part runs all the way to there. The raggy can only go that far so when he's biting he's doing this he's picking it up biting shaking his head around you've still got at least a meter of wire that's protected from the reggae actually biting you off if you understand what i'm saying he's biting over here biting the bait biting the bait and he gets that far that might be in his teeth in his mouth okay and you can't can't go further up your, your leader. Okay, very simple. Um, just to give you an idea of uh, what happens, I'm going to find my double hook trace that should be lying here somewhere. So if you have a look here, what's happened is the reggie's taken it into his mouth that far, been hooked, so that hook's been in his throat, and he's now going up and shaking, pulling away from the line and then going back on it and actually biting. So what he does is he starts biting up your wire as you can see. Because that's where he's had it before. Is that far. And he's ripped it back and you can see how it's ripped through the teeth as he's actually pulled it. Very easy. Okay, so that's basically what you want to try and prevent. Is the shark going like that and biting up your, up your line. So, again, that's as far as he can go. He's now biting back on your actual trace. And that's as far as it goes. You can't go any further than that. Because the sinker's pulling it the whole time. The sinker's dragging. 
going along, going along, going along. You can't bite back. As long as you just keep light tension on the line, that's as far as it goes. Simple as that, guys. And of course, with the circle look, soft wire like that, goes straight in his mouth, get him every single time. Enjoy. Okay, just another little hint for you guys. Fishing in clean water, sometimes um, you want to change your trace slightly. You can either take black permanent marker like that and make your trace black. That's what's nice about silver wire. Um, or you can make it red if you want. I'll just find the red cokey. There's a red cokey. And just to show you, demonstrate, a bit of paper here. Just to give you an idea on what we do. Add a bit more color, it looks like blood. You start take a permanent marker, like that. And we take the wire and we just go. The last bit, not the last. Okay, just to give you an idea. That's how we change the color of the wire to suit our baits. If you're using big red bloody baits, always nice to have a bit more color in your bait. And there we go. So basically what we've done, we've changed it from a silver wire to a red wire. If you want to make it black, we can change it to black. It's so easy guys. Just a little bit of bushcraft and you're good to go. Might get you an extra bite, it might not. Doesn't harm it. Doesn't damage the wire. Try new things. That's what it's all about, thinking. Try new things, guys. Enjoy.